Feng Zhuo was born in the far northwest at Lindao in the West Valley Land. As the governor of Hedong, Dong Zhuo himself was arrogant and overbearing, but the day he had treated Liu Bei with contumely had been his last, had not Liu Bei and Guan Yu restrained their wrathful brother Zheng Bei. Remember here is the government commission. Who are we to judge and slay? said Liu Bei. It is bitter to take orders from such a wretch. I would rather slay him. You may stay here if you wish to, but I will seek some other place, said Zhong Fei. We three are one in life and death. There is no parting for us. We will all go hence. So spoke Liu Bei, and his brother was satisfied. Wherefore, all three set out and lost no time in traveling until they came to Zhu Cun, who received them well and accepted their aid in attacking Zheng Bao. At this time, Cao Cao Hong had Song. joined himself to and they, were trying to and they were trying to destroy Zhang Liang, and there was a great battle at Zhu Yang. Zhang Bao was commanding some 80,000 troops. The rebel had led his army to a strong position in the rear of the hills. An attack being decided upon, Liu Bei was the van leader. On the rebel side, a general Zhang Bao, Gao Sheng, came, came out, out to, to offer, offer battle. battle. Liu Bei sent Zhang Fei to smite Gao Sheng. Out rode Zhang Fei. At full speed, Out rode his Zheng spear Fei. ready set. After a few bouts, Zhang Fei wounded Gao Sheng, who was on horse. At this, at this, the Liu Bei signaled the main army to advance. Then Zhang Bao, while still mounted, loosened his hair, grasped his sword, and uttered his incantations. Thereupon began the wind to howl and the thunder to roll, while a dense black cloud from the heavens settled upon the field. And therein seemed to be horsemen and footmen innumerable who swept to attack the imperial troops. Fear came upon them, and Liu Bei led off his troops, but they were in disorder and returned defeated. Zhu Cun and Liu Bei considered the matter. Zhang Bao uses magic, said Zhu Cun. Tomorrow, then, will I prepare counter magic in the shape of blood of slaughter swine and goats. This blood shall be sprinkled upon their hosts from the precipices above my soldiers in ambush. Thus shall we be able to break through their shamanic art. So it was done. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei took each a thousand troops and hid them on the high cliff behind the hills, and they had plentiful supply of blood of swine and goats and all manner of filthy things. And so next day, when the rebels with fluttering banners and rolling drums came out to challenge, Liu Bei rode forth to meet them. At the same moment that the armies met, again Zhang Bao began magic, and again the elements began to struggle together. Sand flew in clouds, pebbles were swept along the ground, black masses of vapor filled the skies, and rolling masses of foot and horse sent from on high. Liu Bei turned, as before, to flee, and the rebels rushed on. But as they pressed through the hills, trumpets blared, and the hidden soldiers exploded bombs, threw down filth, and spattered blood. The masses of soldiers and horses in the air fluttered to the earth as fragments of torn paper. The wind ceased to blow, the thunder subsided, the sand sank, and the pebbles lay still upon the ground. Zhang Bao quickly saw that his magic was being countered, and turned to retire. Then he was attacked on the flanks by Guan Yu and Zhang Fei and in the rear by Liu Bei and Zhu Cun. The rebels were routed. Liu Bei, seeing from afar the banner of Zhang Bao, Lord of Earth, galloped towards it, but only succeeded in wounding Zhang Bao with an arrow in the left arm. Wounded though he was, Zhang Bao got away into the city of Yang Zheng, where he fortified himself and was besieged by Zhu Cun. Scouts, sent out to get news of Huang Fusong, reported, Commander, Huang Fusong had been very successful, and Dong Zhuo had suffered many reverses. Therefore, the court put Huang Fusong in the latter's place. Zhang Xiao had died before Huang Fusong's arrival. Zhang Liang had added his brother's army to his own, but no headway could be made against Huang Fusong, whose, whose army, army gained, gained seven, seven successive, successive victories, victories, and Zhang Liang was slain, was slain at Zhuyang. Beside this, Zhang Xiao's coffin was exhumed, the corpse beheaded, and the head, after exposure, was sent to capital Luoyang. The common crowd had surrendered. For these services, Huang Fusong was promoted to general flying chariots and the imperial protector of Zizhou. Huang Fusong did not forget his friends. His first act after he had attained to power was to memorialize the throne concerning the case of Lu Zhe, 
who was then restored to his former rank for his meritorious conduct. Cao Cao also received advancement for his services, and is preparing to go to Tsinan with new post. Hearing these things, Zhu Tsun pressed harder yet upon Yang Cheng, and the approaching breakup of the rebellion became evident. Then one of Zhang Bao's officers, Yang Zheng, killed his leader and brought the head in token of submission. Thus, rebellion in that part of the country was stamped out, and Zhu Tsun made his report to the government. However, the embers of the yellow turban still smoldered. Three other rebels, Zhao Hong, Han Zhong, and Sun Zhong, gathered some 30,000 rebels and began to murder and rob and burn, calling themselves the Avengers of Master Zhang Xiao. The court commanded the successful Zhu Tsun to lead his veteran and successful troops to destroy the rebels. He at once marched, he at once marched towards the city of Yangcheng. When Zhu Tsun arrived, Han Zhong went to oppose him. Zhu Tsun sent Liu Bei and his brothers to attack Han the Zhong. southwest corner of the city. Han Zhong at once led the best of his troops to defend the city. Meanwhile, Meanwhile Zhu Tsun himself led 2,000 armored horsemen to attack the opposite corner. The rebels, thinking the city being lost, abandoned the southwest and turned back into the city to help the defenders. Liu Bei pressed hotly in their rear, and they were utterly routed. They took refuge in the city, which was then invested. When famine pressed, when famine upon, pressed the siege, upon the they besieged, sent a messenger to, they offer, to, a messenger to offer to surrender, but Zhu Tsun refused the offer. Seeing that the founder of the Han Dynasty, Liu Bang, the supreme ancestor, could welcome the submissive and receive the favorable, why reject these? Said Liu Bei to Zhu Tsun. Our conditions are different, replied Zhu Zhen. In those old days, Disorder was universal, and the people had no fixed lord. Wherefore, submission was welcomed, and support rewarded to encourage people to come over. Now the empire is unified, and the yellow turbans are the only malcontents. To receive their surrender is not to encourage the good. To allow brigands, when successful, is to give way to every license, and to let them surrender when they fail is to encourage brigandage. Your plan is not a good one. Liu Pei replied, Not to let the brigands surrender as well, but the city is surrounded as by an iron barrel. If the rebels' request be refused, they will be desperate and fight to the death, and we can hardly withstand a myriad of such men. Moreover, in the city there are many times that number, all doomed to death. Let us withdraw from one corner and only attack the opposite. They will all assuredly flee and have no desire to fight. We shall take them. Zhu Tsun saw that the advice was good and, and followed it. As, as predicted, the rebels, rebels ran, ran out, led by Han Zhong. The, the besiegers, besiegers fell upon, upon them, them as fled, they fled, and Han Zhong was slain. The rebels scattered in all directions, but the other two rebel chieftains, Zhao Hong and Sun Zhong, came with large reinforcements, and as they appeared very strong, the imperial soldiers retired, and the new body of rebels re-entered Yangcheng. Zhu Tsun camped three miles from the city, and prepared to attack. Just then, there arrived a body of horse and foot from the east. At the lead was one general with a broad, open face, a body as an alert tiger's, and a torso as a lofty bear's. His name was Sun Tian. Uh -huh.